I mean, they're solid as a rock. Dry concrete base for the paver system. Welcome back to our budget pole barn build. If you've been following along, you know we've recently completed the exterior of the barn, finally. So now we're gonna to move to the interior and the first thing we're gonna tackle is this boring corner. We're gonna turn this corner into this. A budget-friendly pole barn utility kitchen. We're gonna do this on top of a dry pour concrete floor with a paper based top. We got an old sink we're gonna to toss in here to keep our hands clean. And we're also gonna reuse some rusty old tin to give it that farm saloon barn look. First thing we're gonna tackle is the floor and then we'll work our way up. The paver floor system we're using is a simple 12 by 12 paver tile from Home Depot. And then we're gonna mix it up. I'm gonna try something new and I'm gonna use a dry concrete base for the paver system. We'll get this all laid out. This should give us about a two to three inch concrete, dry concrete paver base. Put the pavers on top, wet everything, you know, once an hour for eight hours. It should lock everything down pretty good. It's about half the cost of using a paver base. Ours is gonna be inside, so I'm not worried about it getting wet or the rain. So this should last for a long time. And this is one of the main reasons why I love Home Depot delivery, especially with concrete. Man, they drop this stuff on a pallet. I know most people don't have a tractor, but even with a wheelbarrow, pull it up next to the pallet, toss them in there, it makes it so much easier. So that's about a third of the bags that we got. That screw I added on this side helped tremendously with holding this side of the screed board down. And this side just slides right along the outer form. So let's drop a couple more bags. All right, not gonna lie, that went a lot easier than I expected. We probably have about two and a half inches of base, of the dry concrete base, and it's ready for pavers. It's leveled out. The screed board, the two by six I used on the top of the frames that I made, worked perfect. It packed in probably better than wet concrete would have. So now we're ready for pavers. The only question now is do I mist it with water before I lay it, or do I just lay the pavers down and just soak it? My instinct is telling me to mist it. So I think I'm gonna mist it with some water and just do a little section at a time. Maybe do about two runs, mist it, two runs, mist it. So let's get the pavers. All right, we just got two rows of the pavers down and the conclusion is no more watering it before I lay the pavers because when I watered that back row, they laid down fine. I mean, there's a tiny bit of lippage, but I've seen worse in people's houses. So for outdoor pavers, <laughs> it's not too bad. But when I, when I misted the concrete, it kind of uh, took away some of that give and play for the pavers to kind of settle in. So I'm gonna leave it dry and do it just like a paver base 
and then I'll just spray it several times over and over like a dry pour concrete. <laughs> So all of our dry place pavers are done. What we're gonna do next is start misting this with water about once an hour and small to medium soak and this should set up. Tomorrow we'll come back and wet set this outer row to kind of border everything up and give it some strength. So the first stage of watering this dry pour concrete is complete. The next three hours you're gonna change and use a shower type head for a medium soaking. Then you give it 24 hours and this should be dry and cure. So we are done for the day. We'll check on it tomorrow. It's been 24 hours and these pavers set up nice. There's, I mean, they're solid as a rock. There is very few that have a little bit of wiggle to them, but keep in mind, we still have to add the, stop, the uh, top sand once we fill up all the cracks with either a sand or like that polymer paver topper sand, I think these are gonna be locked down perfect. All the pavers are down and the edging is done. Now the only thing left is to do a topping material. So we're gonna to head to Home Depot and that's gonna be kind of budget dependent whether we go with sand or some kind of polymer mix. We're back from Home Depot. We got our sand, our top layer for the pavers. We are gonna use a polymeric sand. The reason I got this is because this was an open bag at Home Depot, so they had it on sale. It was like marked down to 20 bucks. Normally this stuff's about $40 a bag. It works great, I've used it before. This is a beige color. I'm not too worried about the color because it is the barn, so more than likely it'll be stained by dirt eventually anyway, but we're gonna spread this out, sweep it out with a broom. It'll fill in all the cracks, and then we simply just mist it with water, water Give it a couple hours to dry. Paper floor is done and it came out great. Now we're gonna move on to the walls. There's a couple things I gotta get situated before we close these off. Like this one receptacle ends right here in this wall and we're gonna close it. So I wanna extend this receptacle to the outside of this beam. That way we have access to it for that 20 amp circuit once this gets covered up a board. So the plan is to put a couple strips on here of wood for nailers. This backside is gonna be one by 12 uh, by one inch thick rough sawn pine. And then this side over here, we're gonna do the same thing, situate the electrical, put some nailers, and this is gonna be the reclaimed tin. Let's go.
The back horizontal rough cut wall is complete. Now we're gonna switch over and do this tin wall. This is where we're running the vertical tin, so we're gonna nail on some horizontal nailers right onto our girt. So we got the first 10 panel up and it looks great. Now we're gonna have to extend our water supply, kick it over that way to about where that first panel is for our utility sink water supply. Now this is three quarter inch black poly pipe that we brought into the barn. So we're gonna convert this over to PEX, put a 90 on it, send it over there, kick it out through a hole behind the 10 and then we'll put a sink shut off valve on it. Then we'll be able to tie it in later. The paver floor system is locked in. Everything came out perfect. This feels like a solid concrete slab. We have our antique tent up on this wall. We got the receptacles framed out with this. And we also got our water and drain stubbed out for the kitchen sink. And then we have the back wall completely done in barn wood. It's looking nice. So the next thing we have to do is get a sink base made for this antique kitchen sink that we got. So here's the antique kitchen sink that we found. It is a, an old, Kitchen sink, probably about a hundred years old, is cast iron with your uh, ceramic top. It has a couple chips in it, but again, this is a utility farm sink. So this is what we're gonna, gonna use. It's pretty cool because it's kind of self sloped. I don't know if y'all can see that, but on this side, it's maybe like six inches deep and then it goes down to about eight inches deep where the drain is, so that's pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is use some pressure treated lumber and throw together a quick sink base for this guy. the bottom for the table. Because like I gotta fit it on here. Oh. Why does it have that on top? This is the bottom actually. The bottom? Yep. It's gonna sit just like that. Or what? what are these for? Those 29 
our scrappy scraps. Oh yeah. The farm sink is done. The last thing we have to do to complete this farm kitchen is bring in a few appliances and a couple pieces of furniture we've been saving for this particular project. Another project complete. We absolutely love how this farm kitchen came out in our pole barn. The biggest thing I enjoyed about this was doing a dry pour concrete for the first time. I know you guys have probably seen that on YouTube before. It's very popular and it does save a little bit of money and a lot of labor. And the floor that we did, we used about 30 bags of concrete and it was about 110 or 112 tiles from Home Depot, the pavers, that came out to around $500. Now, if you did that straight concrete, it would probably be double that in cost, but probably triple, if not more, the labor time. So doing the dry pour came out perfect. It was super easy. Next up, we have our marketplace find for our rusted reclaimed tin. This is from the top of a chicken coop. I think I paid like $5 a sheet for these. And like I said before, these panels, if you ever, you know, want to refinish the inside of a barn or like a shop or a garage, or even like a, like a laundry room or utility room in the house, these reclaimed metal panels are worth their weight in gold. They cover a lot of square footage. They're easy to install and they're super cheap. Next up, we installed our uh, reclaimed utility sink. Again, another Facebook marketplace find. This thing, I think I paid $20 for. Used a couple pieces of pressure treated wood to make this simple base. We have a super cheap Amazon faucet. So total on this, we have about probably a hundred bucks with everything included, even the plumbing underneath. Uh, next up, we threw in our rough cut wall in the back. This is the same lumber that we used for the exterior siding. So I had a little bit of this left over, but again, I've said this before and I'll say it again, this rough cut um, stuff that you can find at usually your local sawmills is awesome for covering big square footage and cheap. And it looks awesome as well. It's rough cut, it has that saloon look. It matches almost anything. And lastly, we hung up a light fixture that we found on Marketplace again. That was salvaged. It was taken down from an old farmhouse. We hung that up. We already wired the electrical in the previous video. So that was just as simple as hanging the chain and tying the wire in. We already had the light switch for that. So that pretty much sums up this entire farm kitchen. It was simple, easy, and definitely on a budget total. I'll run the numbers, but I probably have maybe like 800 bucks in this whole space and it will be well used. And that completes this farm kitchen build. As always, thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time for another project.